What's up, Carmen Nation? Welcome back to another edition of the Golf Podcast. I'm your host, AC, with DFS Carmen, Bet Karma. And as always, I have Sam Sherman in the house to talk everything from DFS golf, betting. We'll talk some props. We'll talk about our projections portal. Um, so with that being said, you know, we had a wild week for our entire community. We'll get into that in, in a second. Um, but Sam, as always, I'll start with you. How did your week go? It was a, I don't even know how to say a thrilling finish on Sunday. It might've been the most awful Sunday I've ever watched of golf. Like yes, Brooks won and he did light it up in the last five, six, seven holes. Um, I don't understand what we witnessed though with Xander choking yet again. And I mean, Spieth, whatever he was there, but uh, how would you interpret Sunday's golf round? And then how'd you do in DFS and in the betting markets? Yeah, Sunday was crazy. It's funny. Someone said it like I'm a known, like I'm not a Xander guy or whatever. And he definitely does have wins and good fields, but he's like kind of in Finau territory where he just like doesn't close off as you would think. Like obviously Xander's good. Obviously Finau is good, but like Xander shoots like two under and he wins like pretty easily. So I don't know what that was. I mean, I've been saying it all week. He wasn't hitting it. He was just making every putt he looked at and it finally caught up to him. He could not chip to save his life on Sunday. That was crazy. And Spieth couldn't make any putts. But, yeah, I mean, Brooks is such a killer. I know I was talking to a couple guys in Discord. It's like when he got the lead, I was like, it's over. Like, he's not gonna, he's not the kind of guy who's going to choke and, like, snap hook on 18. But my week was, I don't know, that bur- that burger cut hurt me in cash. Like, it did a lot of other people. I just didn't have enough. Um, I didn't have any Brooks. And I wasn't – everyone I saw betting him, and I was like, God, that number's high. But I literally thought, I was like, anytime there's a community bet and everyone's in the same guy, it, like, never works out. So I was like, there's just no way. But obviously you hit again, which is killer. I put it in our uh, tweet out today. I mean, you've hit three winners in a row. That's, like, pretty unheard of. So I'd be excited yeah. to see who you're on this week. But, yeah, it was it was good. I mean, I needed more from Corey Connors. Uh, I wish he had not bogeyed 17. That would have been, it was, like, a game changer for me if he birdied that to bogey. Did he I not top 20? Uh, he top twenty. I needed if he had top ten, that would have been DFS wise and betting yeah. wise. It would have been way more back. But he did top twenty, so I got some back. Sung Jay just started off too slow, and then I had I I was such a coward. I couldn't full fade Webb, and so I played him in cash. And he just did not do anything all week, so that was such a mistake. I should have kept the Xander, but it is what it is. How'd you? Do, I know you won betting wise. Did you win? Did you go up on D on DFS side of things? Did you like break? Yeah. Up? So. <laughs> I don't know if you weren't paying attention, and sometimes I'm trolling in there. Sometimes I'm honestly just being serious. So I'm actually pulling up my lineup because when we do the cash process with Ben and myself in the NFL, I get a lot of good feedback as far as, like, Anthony, just talk to me about who is in your freaking lineup, and this is for NFL. I'm trying to do this for golf as well. And, you know, in full disclosure, the first week of the season, um, I was in Mexico. I don't even remember. It might have been the Sony Open. So, unfortunately, yes, I've hit three – outright bets in a row i know you mentioned community win with within the the bubble of golf that we live in you know i, I pride myself and in, in you too sam like i try to get my bets in as early as possible and i really don't pay attention to much anymore i try to stick to the process pun intended that we talk about every single week on here because the storylines aren't just week to week in my opinion they're kind of month to month and honestly year to year in golf a little bit so just kind of paying attention looking for good lines when i saw brooks's line you, I think, are, uh, brought him up at 50 to 1. And then by the time I saw him at my book at 40 to 1, I still thought that was incredible value considering his his ceiling upside. And these are the trigger words we talk in DFS in all our podcasts. And I thought that ceiling upside in the betting market was just too good to pass up. So, yes, I had him. I did have a heavy outright on the X-Man as well. And, dude, it was just so frustrating because I just assumed he was going to win. It just felt like this was his time like from Friday to Saturday. It's like, yeah, he only had a one shot lead, but I really felt good about it. I mean, uh, and then ultimately like you, you already went over it. He, he sucked on Sunday. Luckily I had (laughs) Brooks just come out of nowhere. I did not expect that, but yes, it was a great win. However, in DFS, I'm going through my lineup rapid fire, Xander, Zalatoris, Corey Connors, Sam Burns, Luke List and Clark. We talked about these guys last week. Sam, I was winning $845,000 for about two days, two and a half days. So it was like mentally kind of like, well, I try not to think that it's going to happen again, but it 
was getting close. It was getting close. And then, yeah, I mean, X faltered. Um, other than that, I mean, you know, Zalatoris didn't really score much on Sunday. In yeah, Sunday, just, dude, he could not make a birdie. It was – I, I, I looked at it, I was like, oh, my God, he's made like 13 pars in one bogey. It was crazy. And to win that kind of life-changing money, which fortunately I've been lucky to – last year I had a few of them, but everything needs to go right. And honestly, dude, Cor- Connor's balled out. Sam Burns balled out. Luke List and Clark, they both played very well on Sunday. Like, oh. it was right there. I should have won this thing, and I hate saying that and hate being that guy. It's like X and Zalatoris, the guys who you would have never thought let you down, let they let me down. So – I ultimately still ended with a 12x week, which is huge. I mean, it's still a big week. Um, so it was, a, it was a good week. I'm now four and zero in DFS, and then three and zero. And, and yeah, uh, I just I just continue to get dust. I mean, it's like last year. Remember, I don't know if even people want to read. I normally recap kind of what I did last week. I was just like, I was just tilt. I mean, Sunday was wild. Like it was Corey Connors with like Mega Birdie, and I go up like 700, and then he like bogey, and then I go down like 400. It was, I mean. One thing I will say, based on one shout out to one of our long, I think he's a long term sub. So Blake uh, yeah. took down what's the twelve some twelve hundred twenty k twenty thousand so dollars. Yeah. Shout out to the homie Blake. He's been around for a long time in our community, dude. How awesome was that to see his win? Yeah, dude, I, I love Blake, and he DM me. He's like, dude, you think this is gonna hold? I was like, oh my god, screenshot curse. I was yeah. like, why would you do that? But I, that was awesome. I was so happy for him. I mean. A win 20, like that makes me like fifteen dollar entry. Fifteen dollar yeah, entry. That's why we're on here. We're having fun on these podcasts. Sam and I try not to get too serious. I feel like some of these podcasts out there are just all over the place. We have fun. We go over the data, some of the plays we like. And again, he what struck me was he I asked him, I'm like, how did you build this lineup? I'm like, I know you read the content and stuff, but truly, how did this lineup because it was a single bullet, fifteen dollars, twenty grand. He said he went through the projections portal, and we, you and I have been going through that at nausea the last two years. But in specific, we focused on it this year on the podcast. Shout out to anybody on YouTube watching um, because we have it pulled up on the screen. So with that being said, let's go right into it. Pebble Beach, there's a lot of meh golfers. I don't know. I mean, before I go to you and talk to me real quick on the course, and then we are going to kind of rapid fire tonight, guys. It's Pebble Beach. We like a decent amount of guys, but it's just so thin, and I feel like it's a very volatile week. I, like again, if you're a true cash game only player this week, in my opinion, I mean, I probably wouldn't turn up the dial if you kind of ebb and flow with your bank rolls. But I still like a good lineup I'm going to make. But I think I'm going to strategically, again, as always, look for a couple guys in the projections portal that are populating in green, and we'll go over some of these guys that are going to be low owned. I don't mind playing some of the chalk guys because you're always going to have some chalk guys but the low owned guys can really help you take down a GPP as well. And that's ultimately what led to that $20,000 win that Blake had. So Sam, talk yeah. to me real quick on the course itself. Yeah. Pebble. I mean, we've seen it a lot this year. The only thing difference I put in my article that's similar to Amex, but there's no amateurs this year and they're taking out one of them. So normally it's three courses with amateurs and then you have, they play a three course rotation as a cut for Saturday. This year it's to cut after Friday. They're taking out Monterey, which is, by far the easiest, and they play Pebble on Thursday or Friday, and then Spyglass and the other one. Spyglass is actually kind of hard. I played both of them. Spyglass is pretty tough, but yeah, I mean Pebble, it's it's kind of as hard as the wind allows it to be. Where if there's heavy winds, because it's right on the ocean, it can be really tough. The greens are tiny; they're like 3,500 square feet, and I want to say the normal course, normal tour average is probably around like 6,000. So. You just got to get the guys who are, yeah, good around the greens, but just hit a lot of greens, which seems obvious. But, you know, really focusing on the, on the short screen approach and then the good wedge players and then pull up putters. I mean, I've looked at it. I think there could be a bit of a weather edge. Um, you know, you want the guys who are playing uh, Spyglass a little less coastal. So you want the guys who are in less wind at Pebble. So there, I would pay attention to that when you're building. But, yeah, I mean – the guys who are good in California on Polo Grass are what, who I'm kind of going after. And, yeah, this field kind of sucks when you look at, like, the, you know, like, the average, like, world golf ranking. But, man, there's just a murderous row of guys that I play every week, and it's hilarious to see them, like, $2,000 higher than they always are. But, yeah, it makes for a more volatile week. And like you said, yeah, I think it's a good GBP week because there is so much more randomness, with like, especially with DJ withdrawing. That, like, changed the entire field. So, All right. Let's start up top. We'll go from speed 
all the way up to Cantlay. Obviously, DJ's out of the field. Um, I would assume, obviously, looking at projections portal, it looks like Cantlay, and he probably should be the highest owned player on the slate. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I know you don't want me to go this route based on your content. You're fading him. But I think I am drinking the Spieth Kool-Aid. And the only reason is I've been sucked down this Vortex at Pebble in the past. I think it was 2017, the year he won. And he was like lower. I, I don't remember the rationale, but I know he was lower owned. We could probably look into that. And I won huge here. So I think it's a little loyalty. I know he's going to be 15 to 17% owned. But, dude, he looked good with his approach game. Obviously, he started seeing the putts on Friday and Saturday. I really think every time we start playing DFS and we get to Pebble, I start wanting a golfer who is good around the greens. I know you mentioned putting on Poe as well, but I actually, ironically, it's one of the rare tournaments that I'm like, all right, I want the guys who are good out of the bunker. I want the guys that are creative around the green. I really don't care about that, honestly, much at all this entire calendar year, but this is that tournament, and we'll get to some guys really, you know, in the 7K range that, like, come into my mind right away, so I think I think I'm going to personally have a good week. I mean, I kind of got the guys I've lined up. But, yeah, I mean, Zalatoris, he's on fire. I mean, are you, you're going back to your boy Berger, though, so just let it out. Yeah, no, I mean, no, I do like Berger. I mean, I think I was worried where it's funny where you would think, like, after a missed cut, guys, they're just not that well on anymore. Like, everyone knows, like, okay, he's had a bad week. He's still playing really well. And I, I was looking at this today. I didn't realize that. I feel like Berger is known as like a Bermuda guy in Florida, but he's actually better on Poa than he is Bermuda, which I thought was interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, I just prefer him. Paul Casey, I hate Paul Casey. A lot of people do. He's playing well. He just won in Europe like two weeks ago. I, I just, I never, I hate playing him. I assume he won't be that high on, but yeah. I like Cantlay. He's probably the best in the field by a wide margin now with DJ out, and I like Berger. Speed, the thing is, like, I, I you know, Saturday was electric. I love watching it. Speed draining putts again was so fun. I saw a bunch of people on Twitter say it's so true. Golf really does take another step up when he's playing well. He just does. Like he's fun to watch when he's on and drilling those 30 footers. But I don't know. Here it's like you can miss the fairways. The rough doesn't really matter. But I mean, his greens bingo. and reg and like bingo, off the bingo, tee, bingo. Yeah, he just is off the tee, just still so bad. I worry he's just gonna go in the ocean like five times. I mean, yeah, I'm but saying like doesn't matter as much, dude. I don't think he's gonna be driving as yeah. much. No, I mean, I, I think it, I hope that that was a good signing. It's just tough for me, and I know it's like all we do in golf and football and all these sports is, you know, in the grand scheme of things, you're dealing with a really small sample. So I mean, that one week was awesome, but yeah, I mean, it's still like if the putt is not working, he's kind of. You know, 9,700, I mean, now he's got to finish, like, in the top 10 at least, you know. I love – I love – before – we'll go to the next range real quick. I just loved hearing the interviews. I'm not going to lie. Like, I – because I was so into it, I don't know if it was that, too. I know you probably obviously watched the golf tournament this weekend as well. But, man, I feel like even just listening to those interviews with him and uh, his caddy, like, they, yeah. they found something. And, I mean, call it, like – it's hard to always study analytics. Like sometimes it's like, dude, we got to take the leap of faith here and roll with it. So I'm rolling with him. All right, let's move um, on to range because we'll go from like, let's just go from Phil because whatever, Phil yeah. all the way, you know, up to like, uh, uh, I guess. First of all, I'm not playing Phil. There's just no chance. I'm not, <laughs> I don't care. I know he's won here five times. That's awesome. He's hilarious on social media, great commentator, slays champions, but not. Um, I don't know. Throughout the day, I was writing my article, and I almost put Jason Day as a core play, and I, I bet him, I think, was a good number before the odds shifted. But I'm, like, leaning towards now just having my bet out on him. I got him, like, 33 to 1, and he's down to, like, 20 or 18. He's going to be so chalk, and he's either going to win or, like, miss the cut. He might he might be someone I not play. He just He's just so annoying, and he can easily win. Uh, I think this course fits him pretty well, but I don't know. I have to see how ownership shakes out. I think one of my like favorite pivots I put in see what Kim people just will not play. And I know he seems out of like at a weird price, but I mean, dude, he's playing like fire right now. These I do first two games, I do like see first approach, great around the green. I mean, like he missed the cut like two weeks ago after a win. Like he does that all the time. Like that's like the kind of players I love. See what Kim, and then obviously I love Cam Davis. I always play him. I think I have a bet on him to win too. I think he could win. And then um, 
Well, let's talk about you're more of a Monari guy. Obviously, I don't like him. Yeah. And then I'm, the one guy I'm not playing is Sam Burns. I get he's been playing well. He gained Bro, 11. I was just looking at his who's gained around the green. It is so... putting last week. No way. That's, yeah, I mean, yeah. I love Sam Burns. He's been so good to us for so many tournaments. Yeah, fade, boom. Um, there's other guys, like for me, you know, like I'll probably just boom, fade a burger. I don't know. I mean, you, you're you seeing him as you writing him up, making me think about it. But I got to take hard stands again this week. I'll probably – I know you wrote up Cameron Davis, but I feel like I got to fade him. I don't even know if he'll really be that owned, man, to be honest. He's but gonna, he's his gonna numbers are he is. I mean, honestly, unbelievable. here's the way I see it. Here's the way I see it. I would say, like, if you're talking 9K and up, I would say every single one of those guys, except for Ricky and maybe Siwoo, is going to be over 10% owned. And I would say six of them will be over 15. So you definitely have to pick your spots and just roll with it. Like, here's the thing. I would rather play Molinari over Speed. I love Molinari this week. I mean, I might even bet him still. I know my card's already out, but... Uh, yeah, I think he's a fine bet. I mean, again, small sample. He didn't play, like, at all last year, so it's tough from looking at us. He played seven times last year. Max oh. Homa's going to be owned. I mean, he's ranked oh, yeah. high in everybody's model. Our boy no Norlander, we were early on him. It's, you know, he kind of, I don't know, he's, like, up and down, whatever. But, again, all these guys can literally win. It's, uh, it's absolutely so funny how this entire range is stacked. All right, let's start going down below low 8,000s and... Into the high to mid sevens. Um, well, we missed uh, one of the biggest chops of the week. My, I mean, Kevin Streelman just playing in cash. Yes. Go, yeah. dude. I mean, you know me. I'll fucking have him in my lineup. I mean, yeah. I don't care if Kevin Streelman's going to be 70% on I'm going to play him. Uh, I'm the greatest chalk magician cash player of all will. time. And I just, yeah. I don't even know how it happened. But golf, like, give me a couple low owned guys. We'll, we'll find them, I it's promise. This is fields. You can play them in your main lineup. How to make the cut on the number for like the 19th week. Yeah, I mean, it's that's just, the luck I have. Um, You can start in this range where I can go up in the mid, in the mid eights. All right. So this range here, I kind of hate this range. Like, I'll go down to like 7,600. Nick Taylor won it last year. Ironically, he's kind of spiking a little bit in some of the betting markets I was looking at, which concern like it concerns me because I wanted to like have nothing to do with him. But he did win here last year. Anyways, the guys from seventy six hundred oh, wired and wire last year. That's hilarious. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I mean he's That's he's you know there's the Matt Jones of the world. Like, you know, I, I don't know. I mean I'm not playing this guy's probably gonna be high owned because he's got great history here. I hate this entire range. Like <clears throat> I'm skipping the all these guys and I'm going down. I did bet Matthew Neesmith only because I don't know. He kind of he's got a little swag to his game. He can spike at times. I, he was like seventy to one. I put a few bucks on him, but DFS wise, like I hate Brian Harmon. Okay. I know people are gonna play these guys, but I'm going. Thing, low. I get it. His stats are good. I, I do. For DFS wise, doesn't he seem just really overpriced? Even yeah, in this field. I'm not I like the, it's not that I like the range below, but I'm not touching any of these guys. That's why I really wanted to stress that mid, and I know you did too. You know the the mid eight k range and, and above to that mid nine k. We didn't even talk about Jason Day. Like Jason Day is going to be probably mega chalk, I would assume. But I don't even want to play Jason Day. Like I get it, he comes top five every time he's here. But it, no, that's what I was saying, dude. I'm, I have a bet on him. I got a good number for the swap. I'm fine if he wins. Then I have the bet. If he doesn't, then. Yeah, I mean, the AK range is so important that you got to get those guys right this week. You can I, fade the range and then come down below below seven. I had sports last week when I made my stand on Chris Kirk. I'm going to play him again. He just played terrible. His stats are so good. I mean, he's been popping in your model. I mean, you said Chris Kirk, yeah. right? Yeah. He ranks. I'm going to – now, on the projections portal, I don't know, Joey, if you're there. I just sorted by the value – and again, I personally like to go from salary descending downwards because then I can see the value pop. But Chris Kirk, as you bring him up, I mean, he ranks in the top seven here overall in value with some of these other names that you might expect, of course. But, you know, he's projecting really well. He's got decent win odds, top five odds. I mean, you can clearly see that it's not a bad play, but 7,900. I'm taking guys in the low 7K range and, and, and below yeah. that. I mean – I don't know. I'm seeing a lot of talk. He always let me get you to play Harold Varner. He's probably Hell underpriced. No, no. no, no I, I just no. people love to play him. I don't know why. He's just not that good. Like, no. Just, so first of all, I like Harold Varner. By the way, aka Cleveland guy. Um, 
when I saw him in the projections portal, again, I'm kind of circling it. You know, Joey, if you're there, he is – how is he projecting this high? I'm not questioning you, Sam. I'm actually – I'm just talking out loud. Why is he – 15% projected on like this to me is hilarious. Like, yes, of course, if he wins, I look like an idiot, but you know, I, again, I'm kind of going through his stats right now. Okay. The waste management, he did come in 13th. I guess I didn't realize that, but I don't really care. Like, okay. He was good with his irons last week, 7,700 man. I mean, he again, he's so many big numbers. I just can't, he makes like so many doubles. This seem like a Harold Varner course. Like give me him on a track. That's a lot easier, scorable, longer, you know, like, and he's 7,700 now. Like, let's just go to the losers below. No offense. I'm not mad at any of these guys. But the, some of these guys are hilarious. And it's like, I was looking at my old notes. Like, is anybody going to play Ches Reavy this week? Probably not. But Ches Reavy, like, if you look back year after year, he's kind of like a thing here. I mean, what are you projecting him as ownership? I'm looking 7,500. Yeah, 5%. I mean, there you go. There's an instant leverage play. Ches Reavy, he's probably a good play this week. And he looks awful with his stats, but it's golf, you know? I mean, yeah, I think that's a good example. It's like, I like Roy Sabatini. Roy I don't even know why, because he's like not even – I love Roy Sabatini. He wrote him up. I was like, sick. Like, I almost want to play Roy Sabatini in cash. But people he end know. up being – he could end up being 10% owned. Doug Gim, who I like, also will be popular. But, like, if you look at Shez in between them, like, he's not going to be on at all. There's other guys down here too, man. Again, Joel, Joel domin has been awful, but, like – what, what Joel Dahman. I bet you okay, so I knew it was going to be 10%. See, I want nothing to do with him now. The fact that the projections portal at 7,400 is showcasing him in red. I want you, you're, here's a couple other guys, real quick, not to keep going on this, but I want nothing to do with Domin, Gim, Peter Malinati. Honestly, I guess Matthew Nason is going to be 15% owned. I'm just looking at the projections portal. All these guys that are in the 7K range. DFS golf, I want nothing to do with these guys in my main lineup. I don't want to know I've been playing by myself without even you and your fan. Like I've just been playing Kyle Stanley like every yeah. week. Yeah. He's been actually like legit with his He's own. been like not terrible. I know. He's like not been missing like every just, putt. Yeah. Nice. Let me tell you something about Kyle Stanley. He can dominate with everything, but somehow he always comes in like fiftieth place. I don't yeah, understand exactly. it. But yeah, it, it. it does look interesting that he's going to, like if I had this I would say Kyle Stanley is going to make the cut this week. I mean, I'd, I'd play Kyle Stanley in cash. I was toying around with it with my one lineup I'm going to play. But Ooh, it looks that's, like like Keegan. Keegan. that's like playing Keegan, dude. Uh, Keegan, can you believe that of all the hate we put? I was kicking myself because we talked about him. I did put, put him in the optimizer last week. But he was like right there, like the whole tournament. He saved, he saved my week on, I think it was Friday or Saturday. I played him in showdown when he went like eight under. And I like won like. I was in like top five in like seven different tournaments because Keegan just showed out. So to this that point, was like- Keegan, we kind of talked about this earlier. Again, this is like now a mental note for the next podcast where Keegan's in it or tournament. Keegan, I remember hearing him directly after that round you're talking about. And he said that like for the first time in years, he feels more comfortable putting. And I was like, oh boy, if his numbers, if he starts no putting he's a little bit better, not a lot better. Dude, he's going to be an amazing DFS play until people catch on, you know? Um, so if you want to pivot that no one's going to play at 7,300, I don't know why he's this price as Charlie Hoffman. Well, I'm not better. saying because he's been hurt, remember? Didn't he get oh, hurt dude. again? No, but he played last week. He missed the cut. He hit it fine. He's he just not that good of a player. So. I'm not going there only because you kind of talked me off him last week, and I'm, not, I'm just not going to Hoffman. I almost got – I don't trust him. Here's a guy. This is one of my favorite guys, dude. And I don't know if it's like shocking. I don't know unless you saw my bets. Michael Thompson, seventy two hundred. Who's probably yes, I probably like him. Like three percent owned, five percent. Okay, yeah. actually, you're saying seven. So if you look, he's at seventy two hundred. We're projecting him for a lot of value as well. So maybe he is projecting in some other projection system, but seven percent still fine. I mean, especially if I like a guy. This is a guy who's swing change. He's uh, man, great deal, man, like. First of all, he won last year, and he he missed the cut last week. Before that, he had had a fifth, 25th, 21st. Pretty good for only 7,200. I mean, the thing is, I haven't projected that. I'm kind of like, I try to read the industry a little bit. He could easily be like five or less. It just depends on like who the chalk low K 7K guy is, which unfortunately might be like Scott Piercy, which that is an auto fade if he's chalk. Never. My God, I would never play that guy that's chalk. But, yeah, Michael Thompson, too, and I wanted to stress this as we finish this podcast up in good time tonight. 
Um, Michael Thompson's like a guy I opened with. It's like, dude, he's like good out of the bunkers. He's good with the putter. He's good around the greens. Like, I don't know. I mean, those are the type of guys like that I want this week. So I'm, I am looking for some of the lower owned guys that kind of fit this mold. And that's my rant for the week. I mean, is there anybody else you want to talk about? Like in the six K, I mean, it's trash. Yeah, well, man, I mean, we're all in on Jim Herman. This is a Jim Herman course. You can hit the is ball it? like 200 yards. Yeah. He had what about so Danny many. Uh, no, it's not on Bermuda. Um, Jim Herman, I like Adam Shank. I'll continue to have, and he'll continue to miss the cut. But dude, do you remember a couple months ago during the swing season he was like eighty eight hundred? Now he's sixty five. <laughs> I know what happened to him. I, I played my favorite time. one. Almost men. Chris Baker sixty two hundred. He makes like so many birdies and also makes so many bogeys, but he's like almost a man. Ryan Gaze down here didn't he win in the fall swing? Josh Teeter I played him yeah. in the past sixty six hundred. Duff Daddy, I mean, Jesus. I mean, that, he's actually, like, again, he's probably not a bad play, to be honest, if you're throwing a dart down here. Grayson Murray was showing some signs of life, I think, at the waste management. Did he make the cut? He, he stinks. Yeah. 42. I mean, yeah. But in, this again, range, in this range, I like Michael Thompson. I like Sam Ryder. Ever since I hopped off him, he started playing really well for yeah. some reason. Um, Chesson Hadley, if you're playing tournaments, is, like, the ultimate tournament guy. He'll go out and shoot, like, nine under and then shoot, like, seven over. So he's just, like, he can score really well. Um, yeah, I mean, that's – it gets pretty fair. Are you going to play any Ted defending 2018 champion Ted Potter? Jr.? Teddy Potter? Teddy Potts? Yeah. Dude, you remember when he beat DJ? <laughs> that's what I was saying. Was that, wasn't that 2018? That was hilarious. I mean, that's why, again, we'll finish the podcast right now. It was – Pebble Beach, listen, I, we all love the course. I mean, you ask any casual fan, it's like they know what Pebble Beach is, but the tournament itself, because of the program, it's like these guys are, you know, it, whatever. It'll be nice to watch. Obviously, golf on any weekend is good. I mean, I put my bets up at Bet Karma, um, so you guys can go check that out under the paywall, of course, and then there's a lot of free stuff at DFS Karma. Any closing thoughts, Sam, on this Pebble Beach tournament? Um. I know it's everything. I mean, I know we need we need to be licensing your bets out because they win every week. But I do want your like I want your like over fifty to one guy. Dude. My over fifty to one guy is um wow. I'm pull it up right now. Sorry, I don't know why I can't remember this. My favorite bet, fifty five to one. Topic. I actually bet him. Oh my god, I did not even <laughs> seventy to one. Michael my favorite is Henrik Norlander, fifty five to one. I think that's numbers gone now. But. I have that same bet too. We're sinking now. Mine's at forty-five to one, unfortunately. But well, I was lucky because I was up last night, Monday night, when DJ withdrew, and DK Sportsbook didn't change their odds for an hour, and so I hammered like ten bets. I'm so mad that I missed that. But yeah, man, we'll see. Uh, it sounds like we're on the same wavelength with some of these things, even though um, some of the DFS stuff you're fading, I might be playing them. Good luck this week, guys. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks.